Okay. Chapter 14. It was not long before Dumisani moved in. I made him pay a modest deposit in the full knowledge that it would be eroded by inflation after the first month or two he was there. It all happened so quickly. I had never before expected a man to live in this house. The few days Fungai had stayed over, he left the toilet seat up, and that was enough to drive me mad. What if this man was going to live with me for God knows how long? The day he moved in, I was surprised by just how much stuff he had brought with him. For someone so young, he would hardly have had the time to accumulate all this gear. His TV had a 32-inch plasma screen, so I moved my tiny Toshiba into my bedroom. He had a coffee table with a glass top, and we put that in the lounge too. His radio was a massive Panasonic 5 CD changer. There were dozens of kitchen utensils, all of which were superior to anything I had. The microwave was a welcome addition. I had never used one, so Doomy taught me how to, reminding me never to put anything metallic in it. I banned my day from using it. It was, it was too complicated for the stupid girl. The sheer amount of clothes that he owned astounded me. His wardrobe was five times larger than mine, with heaps of fashionable clothing that I had never seen in the city before. The toiletries that he put into the bedroom dominated the entire space, and had a dozen sweet, he had a dozen sweet-smelling perfumes, aftershave, imported bathing foams, and shower gels. I hid my local stuff because it looked pitiful by comparison. He explained to me that the reason he had so much was that his, friend, that his Canadian friend had left a lot of things behind with him because it was too expensive to send them back to his family. We're going to have a blast living together, he gave a boyish grin. The extra money that I was going to get from him would go some way in helping me with the bills and other things that I needed around the house. It was an unusual arrangement for a single woman to take in a male lodger, but I was freed from having to consider the feelings of my extended family. I could do what I liked, and I didn't have to care for my reputation either, because I didn't want a man in my life. Mrs. Independent. Dumi proved himself to be a considerate housemate. The toilet seat was left down. He washed the bathtub after use, and even helped my day with cleaning the house every so often. He was handy too. The first day he saw the cottage, he went into action, sweeping up all the broken glass. It might hurt the children, he'd said. When that was done, he'd got some clear plastic covers that she Niso used for her exercise books and used them to cover the windows up. It was great having handyman about when, some, when the light bulbs needed changing. Catching the same combi to and from work worked out for me as well. Seeing me with my handsome lodger, the perverts who used to make passes at me all but stopped, except for the occasional cat whistle or crude remark. Dumisani had piles of black magazines from abroad, which he told me were sent to him every couple of months by his cousin in America. I discovered his generous nature, and he was happy for me to borrow any that I pleased. I plunged through the piles of black beauty, black hairstyles, and care guide, O, oh, pride, hype hair, hair, style, and discovered that a lot of his work was taken from these publications. There were styles that were wholly original that he had come up with himself, but I could see how having access to this wealth of information influenced his work. He would ask me what I thought of a particular style and whether it could be done with the materials we had to work with. It was almost like he, almost like all he ever thought about was his next huge style. What made you decide to go into hairdressing, I asked one day. I guess when I was at school, I realized that I wanted to be a hairdresser. What school did you go to? St. George's. Get out of here. A St. George's schoolboy who becomes a hairdresser? That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life. What's so ridiculous about it? For starters, St. George kids come from loaded backgrounds. We're talking parents with serious amounts of cash. I had a rugby scholarship. A rugby scholarship? Since when have you been interested in sport? In any case, don't all St. George's students leave the country as soon as they're finished? They can't do, all do that because I'm still here. He fished out his rugby jersey and waved it at me, pointing at the number 15 sewn on. I was captain too. I've got to say, I'm kind of impressed, but it must suck being, being the poor boy in rich kid's school. Doobie shrugged his shoulders. I guess that explains how you know most, how you know about white people's hair because, because most of the kids were white when you were at school, right? In a way it does. I started doing a friend's head and soon everyone was coming to me for haircuts and styling. I was natural, black hair, white hair. It doesn't matter to me because something inside me just tells me how to do it. I've always excelled in everything I do in life, but I should stop bragging. Tell me how you got into hairdressing. I'm sure that would be a hell of a lot more interesting. I told him how I'd learned my craft in backyard salons in Buduriro, doing women's hair and experimenting there. I told him of my dreams to open my own place and one day and open my own place one day and who knows, maybe someday own a string of top end salons and boutiques. He listened to me with his head in his hands, looking as if he was hanging on to every word I said. 
that Saturday, Dumi took Chiwiniso and me to church to Churchill Boys High School to watch some rugby. It'd be the first time I'd ever watched in my life, despite the fact I lived so close to the school. We walked down the pine tree lined Nigel Phillip Avenue. The school was massive with soccer fields on one side of the road and on the other hockey and rugby fields. Young boys in smart royal purple blazers and gray trousers doffed their caps and said, good afternoon, sir, ma'am, as we passed by. It was amusing at first, but by the time we reached the field, my voice had grown hoarse from returning these greetings. It's even worse at St. George's, Dumi said with a hint of pride. The place was packed with parents and school children waiting for the main match. We found a place to sit at the pavilion and Dumi went off to get us something to drink. A sound I had never heard before it began to play. First, there was droning, then the roll of drums, then came a melody that was loud but sounded distinctly foreign. Chiminiso clapped her hands to the beat. Look, there's the Churchill pipe band. They're damn good. Dumi, point, Dumi pointed at the group of schoolboys in skirts, kilts he called them, coming up the field, followed by the rugby team in purple and white striped jerseys. They allowed their opponents on the pitch first. The spectators roared when the home side finally took to the field. There was a hush, and the Churchill boys performed a weird war, war cry of unintelligible words as they moved and performed an equally bizarre dance. Dumi explained that it was their ritual to perform the New Zealand haka before each game. But if their opponents were meant to be scared by the performance, they didn't look it at all. It's going to be a good game. They're playing Prince Edward, who are equally as good, explained Dumi Sani, watching the game with a keen pair of eyes. The ref blew his whistle, and I felt Dumi's leg bouncing up and down as if he wished he was on the pitch himself. The game progressed, and he tried to explain the plethora of rules to me, but I didn't understand them. All I could see were young boys knocking each other on the head and fighting for a ball. It seemed so violent that I wondered why they even bothered having a referee on the pitch. The match ended with the home side narrowly victorious. Doomy's passionate advocacy for the game, despite Doomy's passionate advocacy for the game, I told him that if this was what the sport was about, then I had missed nothing in my life.